Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to cover warping in Ableton Live. So firstly I'll just play this project that I've put together. And we're going to add a synth to this and I've chosen this mini V synth that we used in an earlier video. So I'm just going to play you this so you can hear it in solo. So it's a nice rich sound. And we can see that it's not warped because we're not seeing any grid markers here. So if we have a situation where we don't see the warp markers or the grid markers, it's because it's not being warped, which we can do with this button here. And your Ableton Live preferences will dictate whether it warps or not, depending on the sample size. So if we go to preferences, we go to the record warp launch tab, and we can change these settings here in the warp area. So we can auto warp long samples and auto warp short samples and we could choose the warp engine that we choose. So if we set that to on, when we drag the audio in, it will automatically warp. Looking at this warp area here then, we have the sequence area with this, let's just set the BPM. We can choose to double or half the BPM. We can choose different warp modes and the different warp modes are gonna dictate the advanced features that we see underneath with these drop downs here. So looking at the actual area we have here then, we can see that when we hit warp, we get a start marker and we get an end marker. And this gives us our sequence BPM. And a lot of the time Ableton will get this right, but sometimes it doesn't and we're gonna to have to go and adjust this manually. So if we're adjusting the whole loop, we can get our markers and we can just drag them around and we can place them wherever we think they should go. So if we listen to this now, we'll see how it sounds. So that sounds good to me. Another way we could do that is we can use this sequence BPM here and we can just play around with it in real time until it sounds about right. So that's too fast. So it should be about 124. And you can hear that's now in time. So I'm gonna set this as a loop and this warping is happening using a different warp engine which we have here or warp mode which we're going to cover in a later video but just so you can see that's where our warp modes are so we know we can change the entire bpm of our audio here and we can also double or half the value so what we can do is we can listen to this in context of the mix it sounds quite nice but what is it going to sound like if we half it or double it? So you can hear there we're getting some nice textures. We could then take these textures. We could loop them and we'll loop the next one as well maybe add a warp marker and just get that in time and loop that and then we can listen to these and see how they sound and we can see how we could use these either with our follow actions or some other creative ideas to uh to add these to our tracks as little bits of ear candy and just extra things that we can put in as uh, percussive sounds. But going back to warping and using it in a more uh, standard manner just for getting things in time as opposed to a sound design tool, then we can see that we can now reduce and double our sequence BPM. But what if we don't want to work with the entire loop? What if we want to warp the actual parts inside. Well, that's actually very easy to do. I'm just gonna loop up a smaller section. 
And what I'm going to do is hit play. And if we put a warp marker here, we can now use this loop area as our play zone. So if I press play, put the metronome on, we can set a warp marker and we can move this left or right. And it's going to warp the audio in real time. Notice how it's going to compress this part of audio and stretch this part of audio. If I go this way, and if I go the other way, it will do the opposite. It will compress the audio on the left and stretch the audio on the right. You may notice these little markers we have as well. These are pseudo warp markers or transient markers, and they're automatically put in by live as it tries to detect the transients. So we can actually move these around if we want by holding them down, pressing shift. And then we, we're free to move them around. So I'll put it here and we can see we've now moved it to this position. And then we can double click to create one. And we can do that for all of these. And then we can just press Command and Z to get rid of them or we can double click them to get rid of them. And you don't have to use a pseudo warp marker to place your own one. It's just a bit of a guideline. So if I double click where there isn't one, it's not going to have a problem with creating one for me. Another thing we can do is say we don't want to affect this audio, we could place a warp marker here and we don't want to affect anything before this audio, we could place one here. So now we're free to move around and it's only going to affect this area here. And we can also do that with less mouse clicks just by holding down the command button and what that's going to do is it's going to place a warp marker on the closest two pseudo warp markers for us. So notice as I hover over these, we can see all these different markers. So this is a great way of just making some quick adjustments. You can just hold down command. And notice also that this is snapping to the grid as well. So if I get rid of all of these, if I wanted just to do some very quick edits, this was almost right, but not perfect. I could just grab this transient, snap it to the grid, grab this one, snap it to the grid, grab this, snap it to the grid, and I can just do this all the way along. Which makes very light work of something which could be quite a laborious task. And you can see I even managed to do one there where there wasn't a transient marker. So we now play that. And you've now learnt how to warp either entire loops of audio or just small sections of audio. And then you can go and chop this up into separate clips. So that's looking at warping as a whole. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to look at warp modes and the different engines we have here. And then after that, we're going to look at some more automatic features such as quantizing audio using warp markers.